Okay, hi. We're going to classify matter and antimatter and also do a basic analysis on different kind of numbers. And uh, the reason why I'm drawing this is probably so that you have a better idea of how we are classifying it. So as we know, all things are made out of matter and uh, matter can be classified into hadron, which is affected by the strong force. And uh, there are two types of hadron. La. Okay, for example, there's the meson, which consists of one quark and one anti-quark. Okay. And there is also your baryons. All the ons. This one consists of three quarks. Alright. So we're going to now look at the two types of baryons that we know of, we're familiar with protons and neutrons and uh, protons here you can see because it's baryon there's this thing called baryon number a bit like a nuclear number so baryon the baryon number is one or meson the baryon number is zero proton consists of two up quarks and one down quarks neutron consists of one up quarks and two down quarks so um, the next type of matter are called leptons okay so leptons are not affected by strong force. Okay, and if you're wondering why their names are like that, uh, and really, once again, strong force is a force that holds the uh, nucleus together, uh, carried by the force carrier glue on, glue them on, glue on. All right. Uh, leptons are not involved in glue on, by the way. So leptons, uh, electrons, and neutrinos. Okay, and you see the H for hadron is for heavy ones, the heavy ones, which are the quarks. And L is for leptons, which are the light ones. Okay, L for light. Alright, so whatever that is happening on your right hand side, we're going to flip it over to the left hand side and form antimatter. It's like evil twin kind of thing. Okay, so you just put anti in front of all the names. Lah. For example, uh, antimatter, there's antihadrons. Okay, and then um, you will have anti-meson and then the anti-baryons. Okay, anyway, anti-meson, so it will still consist of one quark and one anti-quark. Alright, because the anti-quark on the left come to the right become, the anti-quark on the right come to the left become quark law. Quark on the right come to the left become anti-quark law. So you have the anti-proton which has two anti-down. So two anti up and one anti down, and the anti neutrino will be one anti up and two anti down. If you're wondering what the charge will be, it will just be negative one. Baryon number is also negative one. So and up is two over three e positive. Then anti up would be negative two over three e. Okay, just opposite there lah. Okay, so anti leptons uh, are anti electrons, also sometimes known as positrons. And you also have the anti-neutrino. Okay, so do remember that um, anti is just look at the opposite side, look at the matter and flip the charge, negative charge. Alright, so that's the classification. As long as you're not confused, you should be fine. And uh, now we're going to move on and talk a little bit about the baryon number situation. Okay, and try to see what I mean by balance and not balance. Alright, so I'm filling in the table. So there are two types of category, namely the hadrons and the leptons. So again, the heavy ones and the light ones. So hadron consists of baryon and meson. Okay, and the charge of a baryon really depends on what particle you're talking about. Lah. So if it's a proton, the charge is plus, is plus one. No? Neutron, then the charge would be minus one. No, zero, sorry. Plus 1e, e, this will be 0. Okay. Meson, eh? Meson is what? Ah? Well, meson consists of a quark and one anti quark. So remember the quark, 1 is 2 third, 1 is 1 third. Okay. So you can get different situation. I will show a few examples to you right now, but all charges are possible. So for example, you could take an up and then you can meet a anti anti down okay this is called by the way the pi 
pion p i o n okay so up is 2 over 3 and d down is positive 1 over 3 you can take and d up which is negative 2 over 3 and down which is negative 1 over 3 so you get plus 1 e minus 1 e so all this also possible okay you want to get zero also can up and and d up no? zero already okay so if you want to know baryon number right okay you just look at this lah. if it's a baryon it gets one if it's not a baryon zero zero just like charge uh, electron is negative one electron neutrino is zero lepton if it's a lepton you put one if it's not a lepton you put zero so now let's look at the charge of your fundamental constituents okay here you can see that uh, to find the neutron and the proton charge respectively i just add up the quarks okay so like for example i thought about proton just now now i can talk about neutron up will be two third down will be negative one third bringing it together zero charge okay and now we're going to revisit the beta decay again okay because we want to balance all the uh, baryon number our uh, lepton number all that so to simplify the beta decay if you remember in our previous video it's actually a neutron transferring into a proton releasing a negatively charged uh, beta decay so if you think about the charge zero would be plus one plus negative one this anti neutrino is zero so balance are still okay so baryon number neutron is a baryon proton is a baryon uh, beta and neutrino is not a baryon so still balanced lepton eh? not a lepton not a lepton Aya, this beta is a lepton this is how we know there's an anti-lepton at the back so you have a matter and then you have an anti-matter plus one minus one cancels out which is why it exists in the first place ladies and gentlemen okay and then there's also another way to write this reaction this beta minus one which is down quark become up quark okay because neutron is up down down the other one is up up down so one down become one up low then you get this one so you might be thinking hey the qbl conserve or not uh? well uh, let's check uh. charge charge for down negative one third charge for up positive two third charge for beta negative one charge for neutrino zero yay baryon eh? one third of a baryon this is one third of a baryon because don't forget baryon got three quarks lepton not a lepton not a lepton i am a lepton i am an anti-lepton you can see it cancels out so this would be the beta minus decay sometimes can be written in a neutron to proton sometimes down quark to up quark now this is a bonus hmm? this is called a Feynman diagram i like to draw them because they're cute and squiggly but it's normally plotted against the time axis lower being the initial position higher being the final position so now you have a neutron becoming a proton and then uh, there's also some other byproducts for example going up uh, this byproduct will be the electron or the beta minus particle and this one is pointing inwards but still pointing up because this is an anti-particle okay this is the electron anti-neutrino that's why the arrow is pointing downwards So a Feynman diagram is just a really nice visual to uh, talk about the particular situation. And for this reaction to happen, we have the W boson to tie it together. Okay. So now we're going to um, look at the beta plus decay. And if you look at the beta plus decay, right, it is the opposite. Now we have a proton becoming a neutron. And when the proton becomes a neutron, you will have a positron and a neutrino. Okay, not an anti-neutrino. So let's look at the charge, the baryon number, the lepton number. This charge is plus one. That one is neutral. The other one is plus one because it's beta plus. So conserve. Good job. Proton is a baryon, neutron is a baryon, electron not a baryon, neutrino not a baryon, baryon. No lepton, no lepton, anti-lepton, negative one. This is a lepton, positive one. So you can see they are all conserved. Lah, all right. And uh, if you want to write the up quark and down quark thing. So this is up become down. 
Alright, and then you have your beta plus decay and your... Hang on, this is a mistake. I will rub off the bar, okay? There is no... It's not an anti-neutrino, huh? it is a neutrino, okay? So there shouldn't be a bar in the second equation. But this is another variation of the Feynman diagram where we decide to show people our little quarks. So for example, uh, when we have a proton, it's up, up, down. I'm going to write up, down, up. So up still become up, down still become down. Just the last up quark becomes a down quark. So everything here forms a proton. Everything here forms a neutron. The one that changes have to be tied to the squiggly line. The up change to down. This is once again the W boson, the force carrier that allows the reaction to happen. And it's related to the weak nuclear force. Okay. Again, you point this one down inwards because beta plus is an antiparticle. And then the neutrino will be pointed outward. Okay, because it's a particle. So this is formed by the weak force, which generally allows nuclear reaction to happen. Okay, so this is your beta decay. Very popular. Confirm will ask one, just don't know where they ask only. So please take some time to think about all this. Go try the past year question. It's how we classify all these antiparticles, these new particles that we just learned. Lah, okay, and I will see you in the example video. All right, take care.